Well, folks, MAGA is imploding right in front of our faces. Donald Trump's press conference at Mar-a-Lago was an absolute disaster. Um, he sounded out of breath, tired, and confused. And there's a whole lot of people who are trying to jump ship. Now, this whole time, we've been over here calling them a cult, and it gets a lot of them worked up and mad at us for saying so. But folks, in a cult, if you try to leave, the leader will absolutely come after you and will seek the followers to come after you. So what we have seen here lately is several people on the MAGA side of the aisle suddenly try to walk away from it, and real quickly, uh, they get yanked back in line. Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, which is somebody that no one should want his endorsement, no one should want to hear a word he has to say, he tried to walk away from MAGA, came out and said he was going to write in Ron Paul uh, because he said that he didn't think Trump was the best guy on the Second Amendment. And then he backtracked real quick and started talking about how, oh, I'm so sorry. I just got off the phone with Trump's team for over, I talked for 12 hours and they pulled me back in line uh, because MAGA just went after him on X. They just completely went after him. And now another guy who I would definitely call a MAGA, I'm sure he would disagree and some people may, but uh, Joe Rogan has done the same thing as uh, Killer Kyle. Joe Rogan has uh, came out and said that RFK Jr. makes the most sense to him. But now he says this isn't an endorsement, but you take a look at the clip and tell me what you think. That's politics. They do it on the left. They do it on the right. They gaslight you. They manipulate you. They, they promote narratives. And um, the only one who's not doing that is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. You a fan? Yeah, I am a fan. Yeah, he's the only one that makes sense to me. He's the only one that he doesn't attack people. He attacks um, actions and ideas, but he's um, he's much more reasonable and intelligent. I mean, the guy was an environmental attorney and cleaned up the East River. I mean, he's he's a legitimate guy. So he's saying that he likes RFK Jr. because he doesn't attack people. Says he makes the most sense to him. Says all the other sides do is just gaslight you and attack you. He says that, and what happens? MAGA immediately starts attacking him. And Donald Trump posted this on True Social. It will be interesting to see how loudly Joe Rogan gets booed the next time he enters the UFC ring, MAGA 2024. And after that, Joe Rogan came out and made this post where he said, for the record, this isn't an endorsement. This is me saying that I like RFK Jr. as a person, and I really appreciate the way he discusses things with civility and intelligence. <laughs> I think we could use more of that in this world. I also think Trump raising his fist and saying fight after getting shot is one of the most American fucking things of all time. I'm not the guy to get your political information from, no shit. Uh, if you want that, go to a comic named Dave Smith. He actually knows what he's talking about. Now, folks, whether or not you love Joe Rogan, whether you love him, hate him, don't really care one way or the other, that dude has got a massive platform. He doesn't necessarily need MAGA's endorsement, but that's the type of people he's willing to cater to. Joe Rogan has always talked about being a liberal, says he's got progressive views, but yet he wants to cater to people who attacked him after he just got done saying that people just wants to attack and gaslight you. You would think with his platform and his money, he would have more balls to say, you know what? I don't give a damn. I said what I said, but you don't see people in MAGA land doing that because Donald Trump is imploding. They're all trying to jump ship and they're doing this because later they want to be able to say, well, remember what I said? I was for FK Jr. I wasn't really for Trump. They're trying to jump ship and Trump is barking at them and they're cowering down. They're cowarding out completely to him and selling themselves out. So I could never take anything they say seriously. And I sure can't take the things that Joe Rogan says seriously because I truly feel the way he goes about things on his show is what just gets so much misinformation out into the world. Uh, take a look at this clip here where he actually says that the State of the Union address was pre-recorded. He actually said this out loud. Take a look. The State of the Union was not live. And yes, it was. No, no. Did you see that they found out that it wasn't? That they they looked at his watch, and his watch. Wait, was, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do a State of the Union analysis. Biden's watch. No way. So, yeah, someone zoomed in on his watch, and his watch was the wrong time. Uh, how could that even be? You, well, what? it could be he's blind and you can't see what but time all his the networks watch on is. it. I don't know what they knew. How do you know what they knew? You just, you, you get a feed, you know? I don't think all the Republicans would agree to it, too. Who knows what there. they knew? 
they're all there live while yeah. he's doing it? Yeah. Hmm. You got Mike Johnson behind you. You got they're all in the audience crossing their hands hmm. when they don't like what you say. It's got to be live. Let's see. I don't see anything. State of the Union wasn't live. It, I added watch. It I'm could be some troll shit. See anything about they that. got me. Yeah. They could have got me. Well, there was no um, Biden's watch. Look at Biden's watch, incorrect time, State of the Union. He doesn't have a watch. He has a sundial. The guy's like, <laughs> the guy's 5,000 years old. <laughs> He's looking at the stars. <laughs> <laughs> what a sextant. That's not why he has a face. <laughs> No, President Biden's Oval Office address wasn't pre-recorded. A fake no, that's image the Oval with the Office, wrong time the floating around. Yeah, there is a fake image. They got me, these sons of bitches. It's just amazing how much stuff is fake. So, yeah, he said that and got fact-checked right on his own show and just rolls with it. Just goes right on with it like nothing ever happened. But do you realize how stupid you have to be to think that the State of the Union address was staged? Because, because think about this. Do you realize in order to pull that off, you would have to get Marjorie Taylor Greene, Tim Burchett here in Tennessee, Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates. You'd have to get all them on board and every media news network on board to record it earlier in the day and then air it later. Do you think MAGA could keep their mouth shut about that? But he will pump that stuff out there into the world. And when the conspiracy theorist out there hears those things, they latch on to him. Even if he says, oh, well, they got me. No, it doesn't matter at that point because you put it out there and now they believe it to be true no matter what you say afterwards. That's what the danger in this is. Because even if he tries to backtrack and say something different, they're going to, yeah, but he said it. And they're trying to shut him up. And it's not surprising to me that the MAGAs are jumping from Trump to RFK Jr. That's what's so funny about this. Think about this for a minute, folks. You have Donald Trump. He's imploding in front of your face. And the voice of reason to you is RFK Jr.? That's the best you got. That's who you're going to go to after this. This guy who can't even go on Fox News without fumbling the ball. Take a look at this. There was talk rumors that you and, and Donald Trump were discussing a job in his administration. I didn't had a chance to talk to you about that, but now you have the floor. Is that true? Yeah, um, I, I'm not going to do uh to violate a trust by talking about the specifics of my conversation with, with President Trump. What I can tell you is that I'm in this race to the end and that I'm in it to win it. Uh, that's my objective, that's my mission. And, you know, I think Americans need a, a, a different choice other than what we've had for the well, past Why would you be terms. having a conversation with him at all? I, I guess that, that was what struck me. I would have a conversation with anybody, and I, you know that's what I've said okay. from the beginning of, my, of if if Vice President. Well, have you had any conversations like that with Joe Biden or Kamala Harris of late? No, but I've I've asked them to have conversations with me, and uh, and so you can see have, why it would be interesting that you and Donald Trump did, right? Well, yeah, of course it's going to be interesting, but uh, but uh, I, you know, like I say, I would talk to either side. So yeah, that guy can't even go on Fox News without getting all tripped up. And yet that's the one that MAGA is trying to jump ship to. Think about how screwed up they are right now that they see Donald Trump imploding right in front of them and they try to run over to RFK Jr. Trump barks at them. They all try to run back. They're completely running around like chickens with their head cut off at this point. And it's so funny to me that the voice of reason in their world would now be RFK Jr. That's who they think makes the most sense as MAGA burns to the ground around them. And it's so funny watching this RFK Jr. thing come back to bite Trump in the ass because they really thought that if they got RFK Jr. to run as a Democrat, that he would split Democrats up and that that would help Trump. Instead, he's running as an independent now. None of those things happen. He's going to run as an independent and Trump supporters are jumping over to RFK Jr. But then they don't have the guts to stay there. They say out loud, they're tired of being gaslit. They're tired of being attacked. But then they get behind the guy who they say makes more sense to them. And when they start getting attacked, they run back to Trump. And they wonder why none of us takes them seriously. How could you ever take anyone seriously? Listen, I've said many times, this is the hill that I'm willing to die on. The things that I stand up for and believe in are the hills I'm willing to die on. And I won't say I'm an independent. I'm a progressive. I'm a liberal. I vote Democrat. And I will be for the foreseeable future because the Democratic Party best aligns with my viewpoints. Now, do they always get it right? Do I always like everything they say? No. 
But I feel like on our side of the aisle that we're allowed to criticize the leader. On the other side of the aisle, you're clearly not. And on a daily basis, I get messages from people going, man, don't say we're in a cult. That's bullshit. Well, cult members will not let you leave. And the rabid base won't let you either if you speak out against the cult leader. And the ones of you that have tried to speak out have been jerked back in line real quick. I could see it with Kyle Rittenhouse. I understand why he ran back. I can understand why Tim Pool is just all over the place. But Joe Rogan, really? With your platform, with your voice, with your money, you had to crawl back to Trump and you think that's the most American thing of all time? You, you think that's the most American thing of all time? That guy stripped the rights right away from your daughters if you have them. That that guy that guy took rights away from your black friends if you have any. That guy took away. I don't. I know how he feels about gay and trans people, so he probably don't care about that. But that dude stood against everybody, and just because he dodged a bullet and jumped up and yelled "fight" and tried to get a photo op out of it and then turned it into merchandise, you think that's the most American thing of all time? No wonder I tuned out a long time ago.